touchline here on Y254 Robert Osoro. Online is at Y254 hashtag touchline. And we are talking about everything that has been happening this week, the Olympics and everything that is going on. But now it is time for us to have fun and talk about football because that's what makes people alive. Without football, man, it's a religion we participate in with our with all our hearts and joining us to discuss all matters football here on Y254 I've got Jimmy Waiyaki coming here to, for us today Jimmy how are you doing I'm doing good I'm doing good it's good to be back ah yeah. welcome to the touchline and Thank also you. I've got Eric Aganya here in studio with us Eric good to have you uh, good to be here yeah thank you very much <laughs> Big one here, let's talk about the Olympics and everything that has been happening. The Ivory Coast has lost to, Spain. sorry for that, to Spain <laughs> by yes. two goals. Uh, Spain, they are scoring five goals in extra time. When they were extra time, it was two to three. Where the five goals came from, you don't know how that one is happening. Out of that one. Well, it was a bad day at the office for Eric Bailly in the extra time yeah after scoring in the first half then in the second half with the foul that led to the penalty yeah for i think the fourth goal or the third goal for spain it just turned it demoralized the team i think because they were putting a, quite a good fight according to me yeah they had they had hopes for for africa for we, we were all behind them just because they're one of us but then with the events in the extra time i think they were too tired and spain showed their class yeah. And it is what it is. Well, a big one there. Spain also going with that one. The Brazil is actually leading Egypt by one goal to nil, and it's happening currently. Looks like end of the road for African teams at the Olympics. I, I think it has been a poor show for, for the African teams. Uh, maybe uh, we may attribute it to, to COVID. Maybe the European teams had uh, more preparation as compared to the African teams. Uh, to me, this is the worst Olympic showing because uh, we've seen uh, earlier on mm. teams like Nigeria and uh, Cameroon performing very well at the Olympics. Right now, we, we can barely make the quarters mm. and the, those two teams that made through the quarters, uh, mm. they're likely to be eliminated because uh, Ivory Coast is already out and uh, we are seeing uh, uh, there's a likelihood that Egypt will go home today. Mm. So it's a poor showing for, for the African teams, and I think uh, we need to start rethinking how to deal with this yes. uh, menace of COVID. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Vaccination is key there. Exactly. And also yes. Mexico leading South Korea by three goals to one in the other quarterfinal. So we've got uh, Spain might be making it to the semifinals. Brazil, let's hope Egypt will have a good showing by the end of that game. And uh, Mexico has also made it on to that semi-final but let's also bring it back home here because many things are happening here at home and we've got to talk about it because it's football and that is what we eat day in day out mashimeji derby is not happening but teams have not been paid <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the biggest games in kenya not happening well it's the story of kenyan football i guess yeah. Money money is always the problem. Yes. For some reason or the other. So something needs to be done. I guess everyone has given their their solutions, their opinions on what should happen, but year in, year out we'll always have something or yes. the matter. So mm -hmm. it's sad, it's sad. I look forward to Mashemeji Dabi actually. Yeah. One thing that people are wondering and worried about is what happened uh, I think at the beginning of the week when we saw the unveiling of, of a five million trophy, yes. the ladies league winners were given 350,000. Yeah. And then we've got teams that are actually need three million from a game they actually played. Does that math add up? I think it speaks volume about our management of Kenyan football in this country. Yes. And uh, it, it, it really shows us where are our priorities. Mm -hmm. Our priorities are not with the teams. Our priorities yes. are not with the players. Mm -hmm. Our priorities are with show off. Because if you're bringing in a, a five million trophy, if you give me a five million trophy and my kids are, are hungry, yes. how, how will it help my kids? Mm -hmm. And on this one, I stand with the teams. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, as I was reading through that uh, they have made their way to come to you. They have said they're going to play a, a, a friendly, friendly match. match. Yes. And here, you see these teams, they're not saying that, these players are not saying that uh, not that we are not able to play, but we are not going to play to make a statement. Yes. To make a statement that uh, this nonsense has to come to an end. Yes. 
Mm. And uh, you see, uh, I listened, I read a statement from um, the FKL, uh, the, 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 the Federation Chairman, uh, uh, saying that issuing threats uh, and uh, threatening the teams that uh, if they don't go, he will ban them. You see, yeah. th this is not a time for that. This is a time for sit down with these teams mm -hmm. and you try to find a solution to this problem. Because uh, what happens in Kenyan football, let's be realistic, you ban FC, Gormaya, uh, FC and Gormaya, you ban half of the league, half yes. of the fans will not uh, go to the stadium. Will not actually make it yeah. to uh, the stadium. Yeah. It's not a good showing for us actually also because we lost also the Sekafa, even the third place. We lost that one and actually fought for the emerging stars that were there. But many things are still happening here in football and farm zone is where we discuss everything that is happening in football. And Jimmy, waking up this morning, 100 million for Jack Grealish to Man City. Will it happen? <laughs> it will probably happen, though he is way overpriced. I don't get it. Mm. It's too much, but... Come on. Then there's, there's also the problem of all that pressure with the, of the 100 million. Yes. Then go into the team, will he find his position? Mm -hmm. Will he gel well with the other players? <laughs> yes. See, and since all Man City players have been talking about Harry Kane to begin with, mm -hmm. yes. then Ogrilish has to come in and fill that spot where everyone was expecting the top scorer in the league, the top assist man in the league. Yes. What will Grealish bring to the table to satisfy the Manchester City fans? Yes. So it's, it's a tough ask. I know it will happen, but yes. hopefully it goes well. <laughs> I, I, I remember when they signed uh, the, the, this midfielder from Leicester. Riyad Mahrez. Riyad Mahrez. By Riyad Mahrez. When they signed Riyad Mahrez, and the first season he did not play much, but coming on to the second and third, he actually lived up to his expectation more so in the Champions League. What kind of trick do you think Udiola is playing with us? I think Guardiola, what he wants to do, he wants to have uh, a squad depth. Uh, because you're going to, into a league whereby he's going to compete for four trophies. Eh? He wants to be able to rotate. Uh, but personally, I don't think he needed uh, Grealish. He needed uh, more of a finisher uh, than a creator. Because yes. if you look mm -hmm. at uh, the Man City team, uh, they have quite a number of creators. They have Sterling. Mm -hmm. uh, they have uh, Riyad Mahrez. Uh, they have De Bruyne. Yes. They have Gundogan. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, they need a finisher because they lost Aguero. Yes. So you need to replace Aguero. Yeah. And I would have gone for Haaland or Lukaku mm -hmm. or even Hurricane. Uh, yeah, rather means. than bring, bring in Grealish. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. uh, you're bringing in Grealish uh, to bench who? Mm -hmm. De Bruyne? Yes. Or Sterling? Mm -hmm. Or will you end up playing Sterling as a false nine? Yes. Uh, because that, that, that's really uh, the trick maybe he's playing. Maybe he wants to bring in another midfielder uh, to play in Sterling as a false nine. Mm. It will be a tricky one there for Manchester City. But you don't know what Gudola can be doing as his firm to be one of the best managers football has ever seen. And also one other thing that has actually been coming up this morning is that uh, Real Madrid have also opened the talk to sign Kylian Mbappe to Real Madrid. Can that one happen? Because all these are two money bags, so. <laughs> but does Real Madrid really have the money to do so at this moment in time? Mm -hmm. seeing, that, seeing as, okay, if they get Mbappe, they're getting a goal scorer. But yes. they have Benzema already, mm -hmm. who's doing that job pretty well. Yeah. So they should be looking for a midfielder, in my opinion. Yeah. They should look for that creative guy. That midfielder to, they're talking about might be Paul Pogba. Yes, now that. But not, not in the sense, yes, if they get Pogba, mm -hmm. they're better off. They leave Mbappe, get Pogba. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they can get the two of them and see if the, France, the French partnership works out for them, mm -hmm. seeing as Frenchmen in the team seem to be doing quite okay. Yes. Yeah, so. What, what do you make of that news? Uh, Real Madrid getting... I, I, thi Mbappe? I think oh. they're going for Kylian Mbappe just because they need a big signing. Yes. Uh, remember, they've lost uh, Sergio Ramos. Uh, they've lost uh, Varane oh. to, 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 to Manchester United. Yes. And uh, last season, they didn't make uh, their McQueen signing. So I think uh, they're going for Mbappe, Mbappe to, to make that, uh, to make a statement. But the question will be, can Mbappe go to Madrid when he knows they're building a very good machine at PSG? And you look at even from last season's 
performance in the Champions League, Paris Saint Germain performed better than Real Madrid. He, he needs a new right. challenge because the problem with these players, when they achieve too much at an early age, he has achieved everything apart from the Champions League mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, 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 uh, at PSG. Yeah. So maybe he feels that uh, uh, because he's gone to, he's proceeded, uh, the, the other time he was in the final, the other one he, he went to the semi final. Maybe he's thinking that he has a better chance of winning the Champions League with Real Madrid yes. than uh, with PSG mm -hmm. because uh, uh, Real Madrid are known to be serial champions. League winners, yeah. and I uh, is thinking mm -hmm. maybe if I go to Madrid, uh, I have better chances of, of, of doing it. Yeah. Because what is he uh, uh, to, uh, yet to achieve at at, at, at PSG is yeah. only the Champions League, yeah. and that's yeah. maybe that that is what is pushing him to to, to Real Madrid. A big one there yeah. for them, but Real Madrid also. There was a big conversation at the start of the season that Paul Pogba is not comfortable at Manchester United. He might end up at Real Madrid. But yesterday, when Mauricio Pochettino was being questioned about who is signing and if he is bringing Paul Pogba, he actually said, we are working behind the scenes, but never mentioned Paul Pogba. Do you think Pogba might end up at Paris Saint-Germain? If he does, I think they'll get that winning combination, especially now since they have Donnarumma ah, yes. to give <laughs> Navas the... The competition and Donnarumma now has the confidence yes. to, to go on the big stage. And Pogba also has the confidence for the big stage through the World Cup and all that. So I think this just might be that final touch that PSG needs to finally get that to the, to the top of, of the Champions League. Since I've never, we see them as contenders, but honestly <laughs> no one thinks they'll win. <laughs> you know, we leave that for Real Madrid or the Barcelona. Yes. Yeah, but I think this, if they get Pogba, they just might have what it takes to win the season. They, they might have that chance of crossing over now and get into that role. What do you think of it? Uh, I, I think, know you're uh, a very good Manchester United big fan, <laughs> but losing Pogba might be also tricky for Manchester United. For Manchester United, United yeah, yes. uh, at this particular time uh, when they, are, they, they should be thinking of uh, reinforcing. Eh? Yes. I don't think Manchester United will allow him to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 Pogba is not pushing for a move. I think it's his manager, uh, his, his, his agent, uh, Mino Raiola, yes. because he's looking at uh, what commission he will make. And mm -hmm. should he go, mm -hmm. uh, then it will be more problems for PSG. They, yeah. will, they, they will have more problems in the dressing room. Remember, they have Neymar in that dressing room. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. They have Ramos in that dressing room. Those mm -hmm. are big personalities. Yes. Uh, they have uh, Kylian in that yeah. dressing room. Yes. They have Marco Verratti in that dressing room. Mm -hmm. Now you want to mm -hmm. add Pogba in that dressing room. Yeah. Then Mauricio Pochettino has a big headache. How does he manage all these egos? They have done a rumor now. Uh, and there's a room of Ronaldo also. Ronaldo <laughs> heading to that dressing room. <laughs> yeah. And you see, uh, PSG have had a problem because mm -hmm. they've had, the, even if you look at two years ago when they played Bayern Munich yeah. in the final, they had a better squad. Yes. The only problem was the ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at what they, when they played Man City. Yes. Uh, the problem, they have Di Maria. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, you, you, you yes. saw Di Maria costing them by getting a red card. Yeah. Uh, so managing these egos will be a big, big problem to this manager. And uh, we don't know, we, we, what we know about Pochettino is not, he's not a manager who will come hard, hard on, on his own. Mm -hmm. and maybe yeah. if they had Guardiola or Jose Mourinho, mm -hmm. maybe he'll, he'll, he'll pin them down and tell them, look here, yes. uh, you need to settle down. Mm -hmm. And I think that is one of the reasons why they signed uh, Sergio Ramos, because yes. Sergio Ramos has won everything and they'll be able to calm these other people down. So adding Pogba in that mm -hmm. uh, yeah. will be more fireworks. Well, it seems that they, we don't have a lot of uh, signings coming in, but Arsenal also managed to get uh, Ben White mm -hmm. on, onto their side. They are very quiet in the transfer window. Are they still content with that Teta, or is it a board that doesn't want to give a Teta money to spend? I think Arsenal need to relax, give a Teta time, since we've seen the only team that, according to me, mm. works well with the changing coaches is Chelsea. Yeah. Everyone else is risking, so they should just give him time, let, them, let him build his squad, get the youngsters up through, and they should stop looking for next season's trophy. They should look for three seasons from now. When, if they build their squad with their youngsters, they do have the potential to be a, 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 a Premier League winning team with the people they have currently. They just need to make maybe another defender, maybe change their goalkeeper, I don't know. But at the moment where we are at the moment is a situation where coaches are not being given time anymore. 
Yeah, you coaches just come and perform. If mm. you don't, you are gone. The pressure yeah. is too much because yes. uh, uh, football has uh, has become less passionate and more money minded. Yeah. Because uh, this club wants to make a lot of money, and uh, as he says, uh, very true. The, the only team that has succeeded in changing managers are still winning is Chelsea. But they have mm. succeeded only because they invest a lot of money. Yes. And uh, when a new manager comes in, you, you were talking about 200 million pounds mm -hmm. uh, being pumped in. Very few teams can do that yeah. uh, because yeah. uh, those finances are not there. And uh, bearing in mind that uh, now COVID has hit us, uh, I think Ben White is a good acquisition for Arsenal because he comes in to replace Luis, mm -hmm. who was a ball player. Uh, ben White, I've seen him at Brighton, mm -hmm. uh, from Leeds, Brighton. Uh, he's, a, he's a ball player. But I think the price tag was too high just because he's English. Yes. Yeah. Because you find that there's a tendency where we have uh, uh, the English uh, players being overrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see 50 million for Ben White and uh, 40 for Varane. It doesn't compare. Oh, oh, <laughs> is, is it also a situation where the coach doesn't want to go out there looking for known players, but you can look for good players who can come and have an impact? Remember, he's also going for this uh, Italian midfielder, Locatelli. Manuel Locatelli was in Euro with Italy, young also, 23. That might support your case. Let him make his team. Let him buy outside England, because <laughs> I think England, there's no one, all the, all the English clubs right now are just buying foreign players, and yeah. the foreign players are coming in for very good prices, mm -hmm. really good prices. And the English players, as we've seen, all overpriced. I mean, even if we look at the, the best, Le, at Hurricane was priced at around 120 or something. Yes. All these prices, I think it's just because it's within England. Yeah. So that's why all the prices are hiked. I don't know if they're trying to boost each other's economy, <laughs> but they need, to, they need to slow down a little bit, bring the prices back to reality. Yes. And then we can even get better performances from the players because even the players, the pressure with the amounts of money they're being signed for, yes. it doesn't work out well for them. You know, if Jack Grealish goes for 100 million, yeah. he'll join the ranks of uh, some of the biggest transfers we have yeah, seen yeah, in yeah, history. I think uh, mm. Paul Pogba. Paul, Paul Pogba transfers. Yeah, uh, at Lukaku million. also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even at 80. Yeah. Maguire. Maguire. Yeah, so. Hazard. A, hazard, uh, hazard. Also. But yeah. I, I don't mm. think, uh, uh, as, is, as you said, mm. uh, Arsenal don't need a most. They, they don't need these kids. Yes. They need experience. Because what has failed them in the past season was uh, they don't have a leader in the dressing room. Mm -hmm. And uh, Luis was doing that. Luis is gone. Yeah. You bring in Ben White. You need to bring in an established uh, player yes. uh, who has won something somewhere mm -hmm. to bring confidence into this team. Because uh, the Arsenal team uh, plays well. And if they go ahead and lo lose Lacazette, because Lacazette, uh, it's rumored mm -hmm. that he wants to go to Atletico Madrid. Yes. Uh, if mm -hmm. they go ahead and lose Lacazette, uh, then they have a problem. Whom mm -hmm. are you remaining with? Who is in, uh, uh, who has won apart from Luis? Yes. Uh, who ca uh, apart from maybe uh, William? William. Who yeah. can now motivate the other kids and show them that uh, uh, hey, look here, we are going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, he has been in that situation when you are losing, yes. and you come and win that game. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing? Because oh. most, mo if you look at us, the Arsenal team, uh, they've been suffering because once they concede a goal, mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult for a comeback. Yeah. Lack of experience because these kids are losing hope. They yeah. have quite a talent. They have uh, Saka, uh, the, 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 the English player. Yeah. Um, they have uh, Tini, I think. They, 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 and they have um, the other kid, uh, Rao Smith. Yes. Smith Rao. Smith Rao. Oh, th th these are talented kids. Yeah. They need to bring in an established midfielder, an mm -hmm. established defender. They have a Bumeyang yeah. so that they have that clear line. T talking about uh, transfer money, uh, mm -hmm. transfers and everything. There was also a rumor that uh, Daniel Levy denied Man City's bid of 160 million for Harry Kane. But the big question is, can Levy deny that amount of money which put on the table for Harry Kane? <laughs> can he say no? Can he say no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I wish it's an official bid though, because these people sometimes just say things to hype the player the yeah, hype, yeah, to hype yeah, the transfer yeah, yeah. Yes. and all that mm -hmm. so i think 160 is outrageous I, I don't really think man city made such an offer mm -hmm. I, I think it what happened be. is that they made a, a bid of around 80 million plus uh, three players going the other way yeah man city uh, players going uh, yeah too. three man city players uh, including gabriel jesus mm -hmm. and uh, another two players who are supposed to go to, to tottenham yes mm -hmm. and uh, daniel levy told them they put cash on the table 
Mm -hmm. And uh, they were not able to, to come up with 160 yes. because 160 minus wages because you bring mm -hmm. in hurricane mm -hmm. you're not going to pay him less than 300. Yes, true. <laughs> mm -hmm. true. So that, that complicated the transfer. Well, a big one here for the transfer window and everything that is happening there. We'll be keeping you updated on everything that is happening on the transfers. But one major one that is coming out this morning is that uh, Manchester City have actually made the offer of 100 million for. Aston Villa captain Jack Grealish and we'll be hoping that that one will be coming on to their side. Chelsea are also prepared to lower their price for Tammy Abraham who is uh, being uh, uh, he has attracted interest from Arsenal, West Ham and Aston Villa. Is this a case where we are seeing uh, Chelsea offloading Tammy Abraham to get a bit of money to go for Haaland and also there was a rumour that uh, Abramovich's son is actually in Italy to try and secure Romelu Lukaku to Chelsea. If they are bringing in either Haaland or Lukaku, uh, uh, Lukaku said categorically that he doesn't want to come back. Mm -hmm. he's, he's comfortable wherever he is. Oh, eh? yes. uh, and uh, if, if, if they lose Haaland, uh, if they lose Tammy Abraham and they don't bring in uh, uh, another, another reinforcement in terms of the striking force, yeah. then they're mm -hmm. in trouble. Because yeah. you've seen Timo Wana is firing blanks. Yes, mm -hmm. and uh, you want to remain with Timo Werner as the, the, the only recognized uh, striker uh, mm -hmm. without a backup, then uh, they'll have a, a, a very long season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they can uh, uh, bring in Haaland, uh, then they have struck gold. If he comes in and settles. The problem again with most players who come from Germany, uh, they take time to settle. We've seen Kai yeah. Havertz, we've seen Timo Werner. Mm -hmm. uh, they've really taken time to, to, to settle. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you, you want to, 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 to have somebody like Tammy Abraham as a backup because he's a good player. He's a mm. good striker. Yeah. And uh, if uh, they lower the bid and he goes to Arsenal, he'll assist Arsenal in the event they lose Lacazette. Sure. Mm. And they also don't want to make it to a point where... Because I was really mm. disappointed with the one million for Giroud. <laughs> I have yes. to say. Mm -hmm. yeah, Quite yeah. honestly, that yeah. the yeah. only people who did a worse transfer was Man City, yeah. giving out people for free yeah. every day. <laughs> but yeah. So I think Tom Abraham should stay, get the experience, and learn with the others, be the backup striker. Five years from now, Toby Abraham will be cool to be the top scorer in the league. Yeah. Because but Chelsea is a very, very good club. Do, and do it's they really need Lukaku or a Haaland? Or is it just a case no, they, of, they, they, no, they need a, no, they, they a finisher. Yeah. Uh, you remember last season, uh, one of the problems that they had, uh, if I look at the Leicester game they lost mm -hmm. uh, in the FA because of their poor finishing. Yes. Uh, they didn't do very much, uh, very well in the league because of uh, uh, poor finishing. Mm -hmm. And even in the final, uh, they yes. had to rely on a midfielder, Kai Havertz, to score the, the, the winning goal. Yes. So mm -hmm. they need a finisher because uh, uh, unless Timo Wana settles in and does that. Mm -hmm. But you've seen Timo Wana is suffering in confidence. Even in German national team he's not scoring. Yes. He's missing mm -hmm. sitters. Mm -hmm. So they need to bring in a ruthless finisher. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are few available. They tried Hurricane. They could not prize Hurricane from uh, Tottenham. Mm -hmm. uh, bearing in mind that Tottenham doesn't want to sell to a fellow London team. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, okay. now they remain with Lukaku mm -hmm. and uh, maybe Haaland. Because well, if they bring in Haaland, they have 10 years of service. Yes. Uh, or five years, years and they sell him service. to Madrid thereafter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, the Olympic Games are still going on, but we can now confirm that Brazil will be meeting Mexico, although that game between Mexico and South Korea is still going on, with Mexico leading South Korea by three goals to one. And then on the other side, Spain, after winning against Ivory Coast 5-2, they will be playing against the host mm -hmm. Japan in the other semi-final. So Brazil, Mexico, Spain, Japan, that is how it looks to be when it comes to the semi-final stage of this one. But as it looks so far, where do you think it will end up? Brazil, Mexico, Spain, <laughs> Japan. I put my money on Brazil. <laughs> I'm with Spain. <laughs> my money on Brazil. <laughs> Brazil, uh, you know, I saw the first game Brazil played against uh, Germany. Mm. And Richardson was really lethal. Yeah, on fire. He was on fire. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they, they have a way. They have specialized in winning this thing, uh, mm -hmm. especially the Olympics. Uh, mm -hmm. they, are, they, they have a good team. Mm -hmm. And um, 
that that speaks volume about us as 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 Africa. Yes. Uh, uh, you see, you don't expect uh, to to not to perform at the Olympics when mm. you are playing at the under 23s. Most of your players. Yes. Eh? And then you expect at the World Cup you'll perform well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even uh -huh. if you look at the 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 the, 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 the England team before it reached the Euro, mm -hmm. uh, they the same same squad. Uh, Nani, uh, Southgate won. Uh, yes. Uh, won yeah. with the under 19. He played. They they they, they did very well under 19. They yeah. did very mm -hmm. well under 23. Yes. You build a team from down. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we are not doing that in Africa. Yeah. So we are expecting trouble for Africa in the next two, three World Cups. Mm -hmm. They may not do. To, they may not able to do much because these are the players you're expecting to be ushered into the national team. Yes, true. And uh, they are not performing. They are not competing with their their their, their, their fellow players mm -hmm. uh, at their, their peers properly. Yeah. So there's no way they perform. Spain yeah. versus Japan. Most likely, we might see Spain in the final too. Yes. Yes. Why, why do you like say Spain? Is <laughs> He's a Spain sport. supporter. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm not a Spain supporter. Uh, yeah. When it comes to European football, I'm Italy all the way. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I'll, I'll put my money on Spain, just mm -hmm. because Italy stopped Spain after both, t both countries having a, such a very good unbeaten run. And so I think the team now has taken a lot of inspiration from that mm -hmm. to a point yes. where losing is not an option for them. Yeah. They just have to win, have to win, have to win. And I'm really looking forward for maybe a Spain-Brazil final. That will probably Fire. a football classic. Yes. Yeah. One for the ages. Wow. <laughs> Let's see that, see <laughs> how that one will be going for. But Tottenham also uh, planning to sign the Crotone, the Nigerian Crotone striker. He had 20 goals. Although Crotone was relegated from the Serie A and is 29, he can be a good replacement for Harry Kane. Uh, not, no, not a chance. Mm -hmm. Not a mm -hmm. chance. Because uh, uh, you're bringing him uh, at the age of 29, outside yes. the league, mm -hmm. and he wants to replace... The, Harry Kane's shoes are too big. Mm -hmm. Because uh, not only is he a striker, but he was also leading in assists. Yes. So you mm -hmm. see, yeah. he's a guy he's who a will score and scorer. create. And one thing, one attribute that we have to, to, to give to Mourinho, Mourinho was able to, to, to assist Harry Kane to drop back yes. and create. Mm -hmm. Because in the past season, you've seen him having so many uh, goals, mm -hmm. but very few assists. Mm -hmm. Last season, uh, courtesy of Mourinho, he had very many assists and very many goals. Uh, Mourinho made him like... Uh, your it's not all about scoring. Yes, yeah. yes. So, and yeah. they had a very good understanding with Song Min. Yes. Uh, one could mm -hmm. drop back, the other one would score, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yeah. And you see, uh, 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 filling his shoes, uh, there mm -hmm. are very few world-class strikers who can fill his shoes. Yes. And the Nigerian guy is not one of them. Uh, Jimmy, mm -hmm. one team that is actually a bit quiet in the transfer window, we can say, has got to be Liverpool. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are not seeing a lot happening in, in Liverpool. We are just seeing a Robinson. Uh, mm -hmm. Trent Alexander-Arnold getting a new contract and all that. Yeah. They lost to Guandrandom to Paris Saint-Germain. Mm -hmm. And last season, they were, I think, a tired team. You saw how they were playing. They looked tired even in the Premier League and everything. They were a team without Van Dijk, <laughs> as we shall see. <laughs> <laughs> That's an excuse. Is, is that, is that <laughs> That's an excuse. <laughs> the, the Klopp is not out here signing players. I think he only needs to get better replacements for his center backs and then they'll be okay but their team is strong enough i think i don't really think they need to do much on it because money is still there doing his thing salah is still there Firmino, all these guys are world class still performing really well they just need uh, a bit more confidence at the back and they'll be okay but can they be able to, 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 to play the four trophies? Because uh, I think the main problem last season mm -hmm. uh, was uh, their aging squad. Yes. Uh, you look at all these players, most of the players who are uh, whom they depend on, they are in their late 20s and early 30s. Uh, yeah. that's, uh, th those players are prone to injuries from mm -hmm. time to time. Yes. And um, when uh, uh, one of them is laid off without a proper replacement, mm -hmm. then uh, they, 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 they crumble. Yes. And you saw what happened last season. The team. Uh, and uh, that, that, that's likely what is going to happen this season. Yeah. Uh, if they don't bring in a, a, a lot of fresh blood, what mm -hmm. it will be like what we, we saw at Barcelona. Yeah. When we had so many uh, aging players that they, they mm -hmm. had to clear. I think it's high time uh, Klopp starts rebuilding again. Yes. Because he plays heavy metal football. Mm -hmm. Whereby yes. it's very fast mm -hmm. and up and down, up and down very fast. Uh, you need 24-year-olds, 21-year-olds mm -hmm. to be able to do that, not 30-year-olds. However, they still have guys like Origi in the back 
<laughs> Remember, and these are still like really good players who you never see. You you only hear of like once in two well, months. Yeah, yeah, they, they yeah. So comes if in he rotates does. his squad better, yeah, he should be okay. Will he be able to compete with Man City and Liverpool? And 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 the two Manchester, <laughs> the two Manchester <laughs> and Chelsea, <laughs> and Chelsea. The way they are signing, actually, they are signing players like Manchester now as a Verane. Coming uh, on, we, haven't actually, we haven't actually talked about that. Jordan Jordan Sanchez. Sanchez. Last that week it was a rumor, yeah. <laughs> but now it's confirmed. Yeah. The run is in Manchester United. Jordan Sancho. Sancho is also in Manchester oh, United. Yeah, yeah. But Jimmy, this is going to make Manchester United also a bit a wall at the back. They are going to have a very tight yeah. wall at the back line. Which is actually good. I'm, I'm actually... Happy for Manchester, yeah. since because that partnership seems to be. If you have Maguire, Varane, that should be really, really good. Yes, I think that backline will be very solid. Mm -hmm. It will make football a lot more interesting for us, mm -hmm. since because trying to get past those two guys in yeah. peak mm -hmm. will be really hard. But then the trouble will come when one of them gets injured. Yeah, because they'll be so used to that partnership. We lose one guy, the defense will crumble. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, I don't think Jadon Sancho should have gone there. You must be a there. happy guy when <laughs> oh, yeah. Verane is signed. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> because we were struggling with uh, uh, Eric Bay, who, who is on and off, yes. who has a few good days. When he's on, on his good day, he does very well. Mm -hmm. On a bad day, he does extremely poor. Like today. Uh, like today was one of those bad days for Ivory Coast. Yes. And uh, we, we, we have Lindelof, uh, mm -hmm. who is also really unpredictable. Yeah. But mm -hmm. he, uh, the coming in of Varane, and you find that last, uh, last season, you find that Manchester United a lot of goals from yes. set pieces mm -hmm. and that's why uh Varane mm -hmm. is coming in mm, when you look uh, when you look at uh, Varane coming on mm. Maguire also being on that team and Lindelof mm -hmm. also being on that team it's a situation where we might see Manchester going for central defenders playing a back three then you see the likes of uh, the mm -hmm. the fullbacks look show they being play, pushed they play a bit push up upwards. No. Look no. sure, and uh, we are talking about Van Bissaka. Gwan, yes. But uh, we are talking about Trippier coming in yes. to give competition. I mm -hmm. think what, maybe not a big three, but a back three, mm -hmm. what uh, Manchester United is trying to do is trying to create competition for each and every position. Yes. Remember when Teles came, came mm -hmm. in? Yeah. Look sure had to raise his game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you bring in uh, Varane, now Lindelof, yeah. Maguire, they have to raise their games. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they do that, uh, it's good for the team. And then uh, they bring in Trippier, mm -hmm. and uh, who is likely to come in to, 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 to push Van Bissaka yes, to raise mm -hmm. his game because Van Bissaka is very good at defending mm -hmm. but very poor at attacking, attacking. where Trippier is good at attacking. Yeah. So that, that, that will really push him to, to, to raise his game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think now what they still need is just a, a striker. Mm -hmm. They may need either uh, two people, they're done. Mm -hmm. uh, central midfielder and one finisher. Yeah. They're talking about Declan Rice, they're talking about Kamavinga, the, 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 the kid from France. Kamavinga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they get that into that midfield, mm -hmm. then Sosia should, no, should not have any excuse. If he doesn't win a trophy, he goes. <laughs> what do you make of it? That, that <laughs> Manchester United back three and everything. <laughs> uh, Manchester United do not have an excuse now to, to concede goals yes. as they have been. So. Let's wait and see. However, I'm not really convinced because there's also what I call the Manchester United effect mm -hmm. on players. Yeah. See how they come from other leagues and once they land there, they, are, they do not seem to, to reach their potential. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that does not happen for Varane and I think they'll be fine. But the back three, solid, solid. I think they should stay like that. And have the the wing backs attack, but then yeah, if you if they solidify their center, mm -hmm. which is where I think I, I don't I don't I don't know if I'm if I'm if I've got this wrong, but most goals for against Manchester United usually set pieces. Yes. Yes. Corners, free kicks. Yes. Yeah. So if they have somebody those big the the center backs manning that D properly, they'll be fine. Yeah. Well, that's where we leave it for the touchline here on Y254. Jimmy, thanks yeah. a lot for making it here. Eric, as usual, we My appreciate pleasure. you coming on. Pleasure. Let's go for that break. Enjoy your Y254 broadcast.